we are judged by God. The Apostle Peter said in his second epistle, God is long suffering. He is not willing. <laughs> Well done, Alex. Uh, credit, uh, video credit to Alex there for going up and filming this guy protesting something. With God's love I don't know has... they do that, but they don't need no, all the pictures. He just had over there. He just laughed. He looked at me and was smiling, laughing. You get these crazy whack job religious people out here. No offense, they're not That's all the like that. First time I've ever seen that happen. Yeah, it happened last year here at Kent. You know, you can be too far either way. I'm kind of down the middle. If you want to be religious, cool. you go do it. But I don't really want to. I got here like this close to him. I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> there he is. Whatever. Keep your views to yourself, bud. It'll be a better world. Okay, good afternoon, uh, 1.51 p.m. on Wednesday, September 11th, 2013. It's 94 degrees, heat wave continues, uh, kind of blue skies, I suppose. Got the two classes I had at Kent done today. We're now slamming on our brakes for something. Uh, I need to be home in 25 minutes to take the last class online, accounting, and then there's only two more tomorrow, and then we're done for the week. So we'll keep working on this. Almost done. I'm home. It's hot and humid as hell, but uh, I'd rather have this than down in the 50s, I suppose. Set up the sprinkler on the other side. Did this position yesterday, so I don't really know where that's going to go. Probably over here. Um, I'm going to go pick up that belt from that mower plant from Sohars and get that done. They keep calling me with these reminders that it's in. I, I kind of plan in for that later in the week. But if it rains tomorrow, then, you know, I'll be busy six in the car tomorrow night, Thursday night, done with classes and stuff. So I replaced these two belts. It's these over here that I, I only did the inside one. The outside one is still a little looser. It probably won't make that big of a difference putting it on there, but I'm going to. So uh, go pick that up before rush hour traffic hits. Then I think Kenan's going to come over tonight and we're going to do some 525 work. Found a Scion FRS on uh, Stowe Road. And I think a Saturn Sky is coming there too. Yep, it's a nice day for little cars like that. It's just the way Picked up the part, it's 4.39, so hot. I want to turn on AC, but I have little gas left, and I, I, I like to make that last until Friday fill-up day. But Mercedes here, cocking up the program big times, and they're pimped out S-Class there from 15 years ago. When I left the house, my range was 44 miles. It is now 64 miles. I have increased my range by 20 miles, by actually one, using sixth, fifth and sixth gear. Two, turning sport mode off. And three, accelerating really, really slowly. Like half the speed that the average, I don't know, school bus. I think I have heat problems. My brain doesn't function in, in severe heat. 65 miles range now. So you can drive this car and have no fun and tie up traffic, but get pretty good gas mileage. Having said that, my, oh, I'm not cutting off the X5. Oh, come on. Oh, shit, I should have gone there too. I'm trying to save gas, it's not working. On this tank, I've gotten 14.6 MPG. Who's honking at me? Dick. 67, see what I can get it in the garage at. It might be 70 or it might be like 65, we'll see. All right, we're coming down the street, 68 mile range, we're in fourth, I would usually be in third. We're gonna go to sixth gear. Barely any throttle, I'm not gonna lug the engine and I'm not gonna create more carbon problems. My foot's barely, no, now it's off the gas, so we're coasting pretty well. 28 miles an hour, it's gonna be 68. Guess it didn't like that, dropped it to 66. Tubular ca caliper guide caliper guide bolt. This is the part where you're going to need your seven millimeter tubular. 
uh, to move the caliper guide bolt. So obviously just, you're going to just put it in and you're going to drive it out when you get those out. Uh, then you move on to the next step. Oh wow, alright, it's one o'clock in the morning. That took entirely too long. So front pads and rotors on Kenan's 525. <laughs> Look, it's still here and he's at home. Well, let's examine what happened. Started on this side, jacked the car up, got a jack stand under there, pulled the wheel off, took the caliper thing off, the clip, pulled the caliper off, pulled the caliper retainer off. All of that went pretty well. And then it got time to, uh, to change the rotor. So we removed the caliper carrier. There's a uh, six millimeter Allen that goes right here. And uh, after we finally found a six millimeter Allen, I don't know why they couldn't have made it a seven that holds the caliper on the caliper carrier, but no, no, they made it a six. So we found that, tried for a while, and stripped it. Yeah, we stripped the screw that holds the rotor on the wheel. So as you can see by that mess, we got to get out a drill, and we spent just under three hours, I think, drilling that out, and it was horrendous. It was absolutely horrible, and once we drilled enough of it away, which took forever and broke like two drill bits in the process, um, we were able to pound it from behind and break it free, and then it took another half an hour to drill the rest of the thing out of the threads. Didn't damage the threads, didn't damage anything, although we did destroy the bolt that holds the rotor on, which is why the car is still here. I mean, theoretically, if you put the wheel back on and then threaded the lugs in, it'll hold all that on just, it'll hold all of that on just fine. Um, but he didn't want to do that, or we didn't want to do that. So tomorrow then, after classes, he's going to ride into Kent with Rosvon and back with me. So we're going to have to go to Dave Walter, pick up, um, hopefully they have it, they better have it, pick up the piece, bring it back, put it on, and, and now it's going to be really easy. All the new pads are in, Hawk HPS pads, the new rotors are installed. Uh, just need to screw that one in, take those two lugs out that are holding it in right now, put the wheel back on, um, burnish the pads, drive it a little bit to get rid of that protective rust coating, and, and then we're good. So, yeah, well, if you saw that, we tried to heat that bolt too and then rapidly shrink it with water to hope, hoping it would break free and we could get it out, and none of that worked. And the, and the driver's side, we knew the problem, so we put on some WD-40 um, for a little bit, and that uh, broke the bolt free and uh, then it backed right out. So that one's all done, ready to go, but that one's screwed. So this is stuck in the garage. Mine is pretty dirty. It's gonna rain tomorrow, so it's gonna get really dirty. Then I'm gonna clean it up for the weekend where it's gonna sit. It's a long day. My back is killing me. I got a lot of stuff done today. It was good. I'm gonna go in, finish up the emails, do some YouTubes, and that's gonna be it. Now, two years ago, I talked a lot about 9-11. Last year I talked a little bit about it and I included the clip from two years ago. So I'm going to include the clip from last year, which has last year's clip and two years ago's clip, because it's the same thing I'm going to say. So, yeah, that is a day that I will never forget. I will never forget September 11th, 2001. Uh, so I'm going to throw that clip in here and depending on how that ends, I'll either talk to you tomorrow on Thursday or I'll make a little clip at the end saying goodnight. Okay, so it is now 9.35. I've been talking to Colt. Just came over to get something to drink. You guys hear that? What the hell is that? What? Wait, you take a listen. One year ago today, September 11th, 2011, I stood out here on this porch and talked with you guys for a few minutes. It was day 273. Today is day 639, 365 days later. And I spoke for a few minutes and I shared my experiences from uh, what was 10 years ago, one year ago, 11 years ago today, September 11th, 2001. Um, I'm going to go ahead and roll that footage now. You can see any changes that have happened in the last year. Okay, so I've been kind of ignoring the elephant in the room all day. Today, Sunday, September 11th, 2011. If it sounds like I have a cold, it's got to be ragweed allergies or something. It doesn't hurt. <clears throat> Just a little nasal thing going on, I guess. Anyways, uh, yeah, you've probably heard about it all day today, and, and I know I, it's terrible event that happened to this country, but I thought I'd talk about it for a minute, where I was and the, my story and 
Um, thank God n nobody that I knew was uh, was affected, but obviously just short of 3,000 people were, and a lot more than that, including their families. And I'm standing in tons of spider webs. Why are they everywhere? Anyways, uh, it was a Tuesday. I was in second grade. I walked into second grade. It's the classroom on the third floor of a school that has now been torn down. I walked into that building. Actually, I walked into the classroom at that point. I got to get out of these spider webs. And uh, I looked up at the TV, which was to my 11 o'clock up high, and I saw two buildings. The right one, which was the South Tower, uh, was on fire. I will never forget that. Um, of course, I didn't really know what it meant. <clears throat> I remember coming home. That was all I heard about it that morning. That would have been just about, well, the first one was hit at, I think, 8.46, so that was about 8.50, which made sense. Class probably started at 9. Um, I got home. I remember we went upstairs to that office. My mom showed me all these papers and tried to explain what had happened and said, these two buildings, the tallest buildings in the United States, uh, have been destroyed by terrorists. And obviously that changed our nation forever. So that's my experience. I will never forget that day. Um, it's been engraved, and which is odd because at the time it was, you know, I just thought, wow, that must it must be a movie or something. But obviously we know that is, is not true. So I pay my respect to uh, anybody that was affected that day. Uh, we've come a long way since then, but we've got a long way to go. Uh, so leave me your story below. Where were you? How old were you? What do you remember about it? Um, you know, leave what you're comfortable leaving. And uh, with that, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow in day 274. Welcome back to 2012. It's been 11 years since, I think, definitely the greatest attack on our country. Um, I will never forget that day. Uh, walking into that class that I just mentioned, it was room 211. Mrs. Siebert was the, was the teacher. I walked into that class shortly before 9. Saw two buildings on the TV about 7 feet above my head. Right one, South Tower on fire. Um, I just came in from watching a whole two-hour thing on the History Channel called Remembering 9-11. I, I will never forget that as an American. Um, so again, like I said last year, if you want to leave your stories or any thoughts below, uh, go ahead and do that. We can all kind of relate to this, even if you're not from the United States. And if you don't know what happened, then I, I don't even know. I don't know what to say. Welcome back to present day 2013. It's 1.20 in the morning. I'm just finishing editing. Um, a little longer than I anticipated, but I thought I would leave it in. So, normal, leave your comments. Tomorrow is Thursday. You're getting more stuff done then. Uh, talk to you then. Good night.